I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department drawing and painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. I am going to speak on Japanese art. Module 30, Woodblock Further Development, 1801 to 1868. During this era, woodblock prints, long considered to be among Edo's distinctive products, were increasingly marketed as inexpensive souvenirs of a visit to the capital. With an output numbering in thousands, Katsu Shika Hokusai, 1760-1849, was one of the most prolific, versatile and influential of all print designers. Hokusai intended his magna to serve as a source book for amateur painters and artisans. But its visual delights gained it a much wider audience. Artists in both Kyoto and Edo, including Masanobu and Okayo, had experimented with European techniques of spatial illusion, but none had done so. Hokusai's uncommon choice of local dramatic light or atmospheric conditions and compositional ingenuity. The preeminent members of Utagawa school were Hiroshiji, Kuni Sada, Kuni Yoshi, Katsu, Shika Hokusai was one of the most prolific, versatile and influential of all designers. An output numbering in thousands was a production by Hokusai. Woodblock prints for the development 1801 to 1868. By the opening decade of the 19th century, nationwide travel for both business and pleasure was common among all classes. Pilgrimage to temples, shrines and scenic sites in the countryside were popular, but the great eastern capital as Ido was often known was also a favorite destination. To enhance sales to tourists, many publishers opened branches or even relocated their shops from Nihonbashi to outskirts of the city, usually near the intersection of major thoroughfares. During this era, woodblock prints, long considered to be among Edo's distinctive products, were increasingly marketed as inexpensive souvenirs of a visit to the capital. Publishers catered to this changing audience by issuing prints that required less arcane knowledge of the theatre and Yoshiwara. Tapping into rich literary and visual vein of Meisho, previously exploited primarily in painting and guidebooks, they began publishing single sheet prints featuring landmarks in the nation's major urban centers as well as those in more remote rural locales. Colorful designs of birds and flowers and heroes from Chinese and Japanese history also entered the repertory, while prints of courtesans and actors still attracted a large audience. They were at overshadowed by these newer genres. The growing audience for prints is evident from the explosion in the number of artists and prints issued in the 19th century. The Utagawa school alone comprised hundreds of artists and the output of its preeminent members. Hiroshiji, 1797-1858, Kuni Sada, 1786-1865, and Utagawa Kuni Yoshi, 1797 to 1861 was prodigious. Earlier prints had been issued in sets of 10 or 12, but now sets ranging from 36 to over 100 became the norm. 
when a design was particularly successful, it was often recarved and reissued many times. With fashionable beauties and actors, portraits at its staple themes, the Japanese print reached its height in the late 18th century, leaving the pleasure haunts and the kabuki theatre which had hitherto been their sources of inspiration and to which their arts owes its name Yukie painting of the floating world. The print designers turned now to a more stable world common to all men. The pioneer to this new venture was Katsushika Hokusai 1760-1849. The Fawn de Peniture to whom Edmund de Goncourt paid homage so movingly. I was born at the age of 50. He liked to say, alluding to the long artistic pilgrimage that prepared the way for the flowering of his art at the end of the 18th century. Born on the eastern outskirts of Edo, in what was then still a counterfeit part of the city. He never lost the pleasant spirit of the Katsushika district, not for him the genteel manner of Edo's Burgos. After trying several handicrafts, he entered the studio of Katsukawa Shunshu in 1778 and worked there for 15 years on actors scroll paintings of the independent landscapes of Sheshu, sturdily built up with powerful brushwork of the decorative scenery of Sotatsu, composed of colored plains and indeed it conjures up in the mind's eye the whole glorious part of the Japanese painting. Encouraged by the favorite reception of his prints, the Red Fuji, the Stormy Fuji, and a Thunderbolt. The Fuji seen beyond a wave all belong to the first period of his series. Hokusai finished this mighty group of works in 1830 and through now over 70 embarked a new series even more grandiose. The Hundred Views of Mount Fuji, published from 1834. With an output numbering in thousands, Katsu Shika Hokusai, 1760-1849, was one of the most prolific, versatile and influential of all print designers. Over the course of his long career, in addition to producing single sheet prints, he illustrated novels, design books, for craftsmen and instructional manuals for amateur artists. He was also a great performer who on several occasions gave public demonstrations on his artistic skill by painting Brab Digona Gyan half-length portraits of Bodhidharma, the Indian monk who reputedly took Zen Buddhism to China in the 6th century AD. Unfortunately, these colossal paintings are not among the huge corrupts of the artist's painting that has been preserved. It is difficult to get a clear sense of the full scope of Hokusai's activity since he changed his name and his style every few years. He began his career designing actor prints under the name Katsukawa Shunro. Next, he produced prints of beautiful women and book illustrations. His use of the name Hokusai first occurs in a book celebrating the amusements of Ido, published in 1799. Hokusai maintained a long relationship with the writer Takizawa Bakin, 1767-1848 and his imaginative illustrations for the later historical novels 
reveal a penchant for the bizarre and grotesque that would remain a distinguished feature of his art. Although he was not as widely travelled as his younger contemporary Hiroshiji, in 1812 he visited Nagoya where he met Ira Kiyo, the city's leading publisher. At his suggestion, Hokusai began preparing a series of sketchbooks, manga, containing perspective and often drew illustrations of every possible subject. Hokusai intended his manga to serve as a source book for amateur painters and artisans, but its visual delights gained it a much wider audience. Illustrations from Manga, Volume 2, 1812, Woodblock Printed Book, and present it is in the British Museum, London. While Hokusai's manga enjoyed great success, his 36 views of Mount Fuji made the artist a legend in his lifetime. This series, which actually comprises 46 views, further stimulated the flourishing tradition of landscape prints. Mount Fuji in clear weather from the series 36 views of Mount Fuji, 1830 to 1832, Oban woodblock print and at present in Brussels. Departing from the Japanese tradition, he generally adopted a low angle of vision, which enabled him to achieve pictures which enabled him to achieve picturesque and impressive effects. Mount Fuji, for example, seen in distance beyond a huge waves. At the same time, a few human figures serve to enliven his landscapes. Here, nevertheless, the wonderful red Fuji is without a sign of human life. The south wind brings fine weather reads the inscription on the upper left and the view is seen almost a vision of the sacred mountain standing out against a blue sky streaked with wispy fair weather clouds. The rays of the sun strike Mount Fuji at the dawn of a summer's day. The upper part of the cone covered with volcanic ash kindles to a blood red glow which the dark green of the virgin forest on the slopes only serve to emphasize thus the red fuji of hokusai's comes like an echo of the changing background landscape of medieval period another painting from the same series is mount fuji seen below a wave at Kanagawa. It is a full color print, woodblock print, and it is in the Museum of Fine Art, Boston. Artists in both Kyoto and Edo, including Masanobu and Okayo, had experimented with European techniques of spatial illusion, but none had done so with Hokusai's uncanny choice of locale, dramatic light or atmospheric conditions and compositional ingenuity. Hokusai was the Sheshu of his day, drawing on a dazzling variety of sources and fired by extraordinary creative energy as he himself noted, from the age of six I have had a mania for sketching the forms of things. From about the age of 50 I produced a number of designs. Yet, of all, I do prior to the age of 70. There is truly nothing of any great note. At the age of 73, I finally came to understand somewhat the nature of birds, animals, insects, fisher, the vital nature of grasses and trees. Therefore, at 80, 
I shall have made great progress at 90 I shall have penetrated even further the deeper meaning of things and at 100 I shall have become truly marvelous and at 110 each dot each line shall purely possess a life of its own. This was the translation by Richard Lane. Hokusai's vision widely diffused through prints and books reflected and heightened public consciousness of Mount Fuji as a noble yet dangerous peak. Although it was a hundred miles, 62 kilometer away from Edo and had not erupted since 1707, city residents were keenly aware that it was an active volcano and held it in veneration. Hokusai's personal obsession with Mount Fuji was rooted in the ancient and still vital belief that it was sacred and a source of the secret of immorality. Indeed, throughout the summer months when there was little risk of avalanches, male pilgrims travelled from all over the country to climb its peak. Women were prohibited from doing so. By depicting Mount Fuji time and again and by employing its conical peaks as a distant yet central element in many of his views of Ido. Hokusai contributed to the popular perception that this sacred mountain was integral to Ido's identity. The enthusiastic response to Hokusai's Fuji series prompted other artists to develop the landscape genre still further. Utagawa Endo Hiroshiji 1797-1858 was by far its most gifted practitioner. A low-ranking samurai whose family held a hereditary position in the Edo Fire Brigade. Hiroshiji studied Kano painting but was also conversant with the painting styles. His work reveals the influence of literati, Maruyama, Shijo and Western pictorial techniques. Hiroshiji's compositions like those of Hokusai are characterized by personal often highly contrived sense of order. Unlike Hokusai's work, however, Hiroshiji's reveal an emotional response to the poetry of place that found resonance both among city dwellers who increasingly viewed the countryside with nostalgia and among visitors from the provinces who were delighted to see landmarks from the regions celebrated in prints. Hiroshiji began issuing his celebrated 53 stages on the Tokaido in 1833. It is a color print and at present in the National Museum, Tokyo. A year after he himself had traveled along this route as a member of a Daimo retinue, the slanting crisis crossing lines of the hillside, the roofs, the swaying bamboo and the pelting rain convey the movement and bustle brought on by the shower. As people run for shelter and convey it without impairing the balance and harmony of the composition, the figures drawn straight from life reveal sureness of his draftsmanship, but a colorist as well. He successfully unifies the whole scene by a means of a prevailing darkness of tone evoking the sadness of a rainy day in the country. One of the most striking things about the work is the effect produced by the clumps of bamboo silhouetted against the sky. Much of the beauty of Hiroshiji's art springs from his sensitive response to variations of weather 
and the changing seasons and thus feeling for nature links his work with the lyrical landscapes of the Yamato A of the Hinyan period. Portraits and illustrations for serial stories under the name of Shunro on the death of his master in 1792, he left the studio owing to a conflict with his colleague Shunko. The subject matter capitalized on phenomenal success of footing it along the Tokaido, a picturesque novel issued in annual installments between 1802 and 1822 and of a kabuki play also set on the Tokaido that was first staged in 1825. Hiroshiji's series was so successful that the artist reissued it in three versions, including one made jointly with Kuni Sada. He also designed another extended series devoted to the 69 stages of the Ki Sokaido Road, the inland route between Edo and Kyoto, as well as many smaller series highlighting provincial landmarks. Endo Hiroshiji's polychrome wood block print, Snow at Kanihara, from 56 stations of the Tokaido, 1853. Here in this print, the feeling of loneliness and quietude in the snow-covered pass at Kamahara. Hiroshiji capped his long and illustrious career as a designer of topographic prints with the ambitious fireworks over Ryogoku Bridge from the series 100 Famous Views of Edo, Maisho Edo Hake-e, 1857 Oban woodblock print and at present in the British Museum, London. In this print, watching the annual display of fireworks from boats on the Sumida River was a highlight of the summer in Ido. Issued serially between 1856 and 1859, just as Japan was opening to foreign trade, their striking compositional effects and colors exerted a powerful influence on artists both in Japan and abroad. In this extraordinary series, Hiroshiji capitalized on the tradition of Meisho, pictures of famous places with seasonal and poetic associations, to immortalize shrines, temples, tea houses and restaurants, theaters and shops, rivers and canals, all bustling with activity. While accurately presenting topographic detail, the artist adopted unusual vantage points, seasonal allusions and striking colors to invest scene with freshness and lyricism. The cumulative effect on both inhabitants and visitors of Hiroshiji's celebration of Ido's scenic beauty and prosperity was analogous to that of Hokusai's Fuji series. The Utagawa school where Hiroshiji was trained was the foremost print atelier in the 19th century. Although its members were specially noted for actor and historical prints, most were adept in all the popular genres. Toku Yoni's Tripach show the shop of his publisher E. Judo, combining a perspective view the portrayal of fashionable beauties and fan-shaped actor prints is emblematic of this range. The success of Utagawa school can be attributed primarily to the artist Toko Yoni, trained among whom Kuni Sada and Kuni Yoshi were specially talented. Utagawa Kuni Sada, 1786-1865, like Utamaro, was an active participant in the lively cultural life of Ido. A stilled haikai and kayoka poet, he was a drinking companion of many of the literary luminaries of the day. He was also conversant with the latest Ido fashions 
and used this knowledge in many of his prints. A tipsy courtesan from Fukagawa, 1829-30. The fan-shaped woodblock print design illustrated portrays the long-faced and sharply pointed chin of this courtesan, which is the hallmarks of the Utagawa school figural style. This courtesan from one of the new unofficial brothel districts that emerged after Yoshiwara was destroyed by fire in 1812. Her plaid costume reflects the new taste in dress during the 1820s while the exotic European goblet she holds in her hand and deep blue landscape in the background are evidence of the growing availability of imports from the West. The use of Prussian blue, a synthetic dye introduced from Europe was in vogue among many printmakers in the 1830s and 1840s. Kuni Yoshi Utagawa, 1797-1861, began his professional career in 1814 but remained overshadowed by Kuni Sada until 1827 when he began publication of a series of 108 prints featuring the heroes of tales of the water margin Sui Koden, Taki Zawa, Bacon's immensely popular adaptation of a Chinese novel about a band of outlaws who forms a community on a mountain surrounded by a vast marsh. The publication of this novel in 1805 had ushered in a vogue for historical and legendary themes. Although Hokusai and Kuni Sada both produced illustrations, Kuni Yoshi's composition pulsated with action of an intensity and ferocity more extreme than that of earlier designs. A woodblock print of Kuniyoshi, Foria Kuto Chojun, from the series of 108 heroes of the Sukidon, 1827 to 1830. It is in the British Museum, London. Here, Kuniyoshi's glorification of the muscular, richly tattooed bodies of these counter culture heroes lent new legitimacy to elaborate body decoration associated with Edo gangsters. His exploitation of an aesthetic of depravity embodied in scenes of glory, erotic, and sadistic brilliance developed against a backdrop of increasing social and political instability in Edo. The publication of prints featuring heroes of Chinese and Japanese history was given a boost in 1842 when the government banned the portrayal of actors and courtesans, urging artists instead to focus attention on more morally uplifting subject matter. Kuniyoshi took advantage of this mandate by issuing prints devoted to heroes of the 12th century wars between the rival Taira and Minamato clans. However, in the eyes of a public accustomed to looking for secret meanings, his portrayals of these paragons of feudal loyalty and self-sacrifice were often interpreted as censorious references to the existing political order. Such mixed messages, whether intentional or not, were but one of many signs of the fraying of the Tokugawa social fabric. In giving artistic expression to the gap between official and perceived reality, woodblock print artists were reflecting the growing political disaffection that marked the final decades of Tokugawa rule.